Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 7th October 2017. I am Sagar Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it can help in your trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we'll use technical charts to analyze oil, gold, and broad market ETFs. Before going into broad market internal analysis, sector and industry analysis using graphs and ranking table. Along the way, we may review some of the trades shared in traders community and look for trades for the coming week. Q&A is throughout the session. You may ask questions through the Q&A panel and I'll try to answer them as we go along. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live chats. We start by looking at US oil using the weekly backdrop template on the left hand side and daily hop on template on the right hand side. This is our standard at a glance template to decide whether there is a trade setup at the right edge of the chart. We can change to the advanced hop on template that allows us to see the watermark support and resistance levels. From the daily chart, we see that last week, oil went above the watermark resistance level. Then it displayed a bear release signal. And this week it dropped. In superior profit way, we are not fond of breakout trades. So when price went above this resistance level, created a breakout, we would not be trying to take a long trade. Another reason we would not like to take a long trade at that time is because price was already at upper boundary level. Not taking breakout trade helps us a lot and it helped in this case also US oil dropped and right now it is near the value area. From the weekly chart, we see that over longer term, it is in an uptrend. If price comes to the memory support line in weekly and goes up from there, it may give us a low risk long entry opportunity. We can see from daily chart that the memory support is in daily chart as well. So if price comes to that memory support and goes up, it may give us a low risk opportunity, long entry opportunity, and that could be a bounce trade setup. Right now there is no trade in US oil. Gold came down sharply from the upper boundary to lower boundary. These are the areas that we tell a stock is in wild swings. If a stock is moving in proper trend, then during uptrend, it remains between value area and upper boundary. During downtrend, it remains between value area and lower boundary. If a stock moves straight from upper to lower boundary or lower to upper boundary, 
then it is not displaying any steady trend and we say that the stock is in wild swings mode. During these times, as we can see in GLD now, we don't find any standard Q trade setup, at least not easily. And that is designed in the product so that it can keep us from harm's way. We can see there is a memory support line in weekly and also a memory support line in daily. If price came all the way to the memory support line and bounced up from there, it might give us a low risk bounce long trade opportunity. If we look at the right edge, we see that on Friday, gold opened lower but closed sharply higher. With high activity in the daily chart, there is no standard trade setup in GLD. However, if GLD starts to go up from here, you may keep an eye on gold miners to see if they give a low risk entry opportunity. Before going into the broad market ETFs, let's look at the broad market internals first. Every week, we look at broad market internals using NASDAQ composite index, weekly chart on the left hand side and NYSE composite index, weekly chart on the right hand side. Because this analysis is using broad market indices and weekly charts, this is to be used only for longer term investment decision, not for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. We see that for last two weeks, NASDAQ went up sharply. In fact, if you look at this week and previous week's candles, you see that NASDAQ was stronger in these two periods than NYSE. Both of them made new all-time highs. Both of them are also overbought. The traffic light candle color on the weekly charts have remained green for many weeks now. On the NYSE, it is green for six weeks and on NASDAQ, it is green for six weeks as well. So the broad market indices are continuing to make new all-time highs. However, again, if we look at the internals, especially for this week, the internals are not strong at all. All the six internals decline. That is very much at odds with the two indices making new all-time highs. In fact, if we look at advanced decline, then we see for this week as well as for previous week, it declined, both for NASDAQ and NYSE. And this week, advanced decline for both the exchanges turned negative. What it shows is that the continued up move of the indices is probably due to few larger stocks going up. Majority of stocks are not participating in the up move. If majority of the stocks participated in this week's up move, then we would expect the advanced decline to go up and close above zero. That did not happen. The internals also continue to be weak relative to the indices. They are not able to breach prior peaks, though the indices themselves are making new all-time highs. So in summary, we can say that the broad market indices are bullish. There is no doubt about that. The internals continue to be weak 
and for this specific week internals are bearish the fact that majority of stocks declined this week while the broad market indices made new all time highs going up sharply shows that it is time to be cautious about taking new long trades especially in industries which had already gone up significantly at the same time because the broad markets are strong there is no reason to exit profitable positions one may use trailing stop so that profit doesn't erode in case the market comes down the strength that is visible in this broad market internals analysis is also evident from the broad market etfs charts we are looking at spy using q at a glance template we can see from the weekly chart that spy went up sharply made new all time highs just like nyse did like nyse spy backdrop candle color is also bullish for six successive weeks in the daily chart we see it is above upper boundary so it would be too late to take any long trade right now the same pattern is visible from the other etfs as well at least from qqq and dia qqq also made new all time high weekly candle closed above the watermark resistance level one week ago it precisely reversed from the memory support line we saw from nasdaq internals that nasdaq for this week and previous week went up more strongly than nyse that is qqq went up more strongly than spy however in earlier periods nasdaq was underperforming and that is evident when we look at the relative performance line during this period the white relative performance line for qqq was sharply declining showing that in this period nasdaq was underperforming or qqq was underperforming spy whereas from here onward for last two weeks the relative performance line of qqq is tilting up showing that qqq is outperforming spy what about dia dia went up very sharply this week in the weekly chart it has the most bullish shape candle if we look back we see that backdrop candle color is now bullish for four weeks unlike the six weeks that we saw for spy and qqq in the daily chart it is above upper boundary in fact that is true for spy qqq dia all the three etfs so we will not be taking any long trade at this overbought areas the last broad market etf that we look at is iwm russell 2000 etf after displaying the bullish headwind it went up strongly it is also up for six successive weeks that is displaying bullish backdrop candle color for six successive weeks in the weekly chart from the relative performance line we can see that for almost the entire period in the weekly chart for last 6 weeks 
IWM was outperforming SPY. The relative performance line was tilting up. The same pattern we can see in the daily chart as well. Practically after the bullish Edwin signal appeared, it was outperforming broad market till this week. However, this week that has changed. This is the only of the four broad market ETFs that has turned neutral or yellow in the daily chart. In fact, that has happened on Wednesday itself. So for last three days, it is not able to go up anymore. So IWM was strongest in last few weeks showing that the small cap stocks were going up more strongly. That seems to be changing in last three days. This pattern we continue to see week after week that sometimes DIA is strongest, sometimes QQQ is strongest and sometimes IWM is strongest. As if the bigger players are going in and out of stocks. The internals are showing that when the markets are going up, it is not going up for many stocks moving up together, but probably for fewer larger stocks going up. This paints the same picture that we can get from broad market ETFs, that the markets are clearly bullish, so no need to exit profitable long position. At the same time, one may be cautious and use trailing stops so that profit does not erode. In case the market drops. Right now, we have to say that all the indications are strongly bullish. And we will see the same thing from our industry and sector graph and ranking tables. Every week we look at sector performance, analyzing 11 sectors across three review periods. Red bar represents performance of this week, yellow bar performance of one week prior to red bar, and blue bar performance of two weeks prior to yellow bar. Together they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance. In this week, eight of the 11 sectors gained, showing overall strength of the market. Materials, financial and consumer discretionary. These are the best performers of this week. Utilities went up this way in prior three review periods, that is for previous one month, it had declined from the very top. Though utilities went up this way, we can have a look at QH industry analyst and that will show that industries in this sector are still weak. Let's have a look at QH. Instead of using QH, industry analyst, in today's session, I'm going to use Q drill USA. So that when required, we can drill down from the industry to the stocks from the same program. Every time we open QH, industry analyst or Q drill, USA, it analyzes 255 industry groups at present. Analyzes them over 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently for recent periods over 10 days, 5 days, 2 days and 1 day. Other than the ranking that is assigned based on performance analyst for all the review periods, one for the strongest and 255 for the weakest, 
we are now also able to see the industries which are improving in rank fastest or declining in rank fastest. We can see this rank change over 10 day to five day period, five day to two day period, as well as two day to one day period. The heat map represents the same meaning. Cyan is strong and magenta is weak, be it over the performance analysis period or the rank change columns. We can click the investigate button to get the data into industry work area and do our analysis there. Let's look at the utilities. Instantly from the color coding, we can see that over five days period, most of the utilities remain magenta, that is weak. So though the sector went up with a small percentage gain relative to the other industries, utilities continues to be weak. Except water and related utilities, but that alone does not give us enough confidence to start taking long trades in these industries. We saw that this week financials was one of the strongest sector. If we look at QH sector analyst, then we'll see that over last one year, financials is the best performer now. I had shared a trade on pack waste I think one week ago, I shared it in Q traders community that trade exited with profit. I had identified it using Q360 degrees analysis. It was at an optimal buy point. Looking at the strength of the sector, we can imagine that we had many such profitable trade opportunities in last one year. Let's look at QH sector analyst to see that indeed financials is the best performing sector over one year period and also over recent times. And then we look at the trade that I shared in traders community on PacWest. Every time we open QH sector analyst, it analyzes performance of 11 sectors across 12 monthly review periods and more frequently for recent periods of 10 days and five days. We can click the investigate button to get the data into work area and do filtering, sorting, etc. If we sort it over 12 month period, then we can see that financial is ranked one over 12 months as well as 11 months and also in recent one month and recent 10 days period. In the middle, it was not the top performer as we can see from the rank declining and also from the magenta color. In recent times, it gained in strength. And that was the time when I shared pack waste long trade opportunity. Let's have a look at that trade. In the community, we can search for a stock. On September 18th, no, not on September 18th. Let me scroll up. Yes, September 18th. September 18th. I shared the analysis on pack waste using Q360 degrees analysis from QH industry analyst. You could see instantly at that time that banks 
was strong, ranking 22 and improved a lot from rank of 152 from 10 days to 5 days. And the color code Im immediately showed that banks were gaining in strength. Over one day, it improved strength further. Packways belong to this industry. So I checked the fundamentals of Packways using QVital. Immediately using color coding, I could see that in terms of valuation, that is the relative value column and internal value column, both were blue. That showed it is one of the strongest in terms of valuation. The bold letter showed that it is among the top 20% of strong value stocks. And when I look at the EPS and revenue growth columns, the green color also immediately showed that it was one of the strongest. It also paid a very nice dividend, 4.38%. Looking at the Q technical charts, I identified the go with flow long trade opportunity. One bar prior to the bar on the right edge. However, memory resistance line was very close. So I would not be entering a trade at the close of the cyan candle. Instead, I would wait next day for price to open just above the memory resistance line and using Q fine tune chart, take a very low risk, long trade opportunity. In this stock where the industry was strengthening and fundamentally it was a strong stock at, as well. If we look at Packways now, from our entry, just near market open on this candle, it went up, hit the profit target of upper boundary easily. As the industry was strong, the chart was bullish and the company was also fundamentally strong. We would not exit full position, but use trailing stop to let profit run. And probably the trailing stop would be hit in this week. We can change to the hop off template. As Packwest was going up, we would be using the Q protection level to move our trailing stop up and at this price level, our remaining position will exit at the Q protection level. This shows a very good way of using Q protection signal for trailing stop. Partial position would have been closed at upper boundary and the remaining position would be closed at this trailing stop level. It was a pretty profitable swing trade. This analysis can be used in all countries, not only in the USA market. I am in Thailand at present. So I wanted to look at some of the banking stocks in Thailand. For global stocks, we will continue to use QVital. In this week, I did an analysis of the banking stocks in Thailand. They are listed in Bangkok. And this company, LH Bank, immediately caught my eye. It is not overvalued. Relative valuation is not magenta, it is yellow, neutral. Whereas in terms of growth, it was clearly the strongest across both EPS growth as well as revenue growth in recent years. It has a small dividend and earnings is positive. So I had looked at the chart of LH Bank and for that, for global stocks, we have to use Q Global on Metastock. And this is how the stock looks like at end of Friday. I'm deleting the relative performance line because I didn't set the broad market index. 
to SET, that is Stock Exchange of Thailand Index, it was still set to S&P 500. That is not the right way to use relative performance. We should set the broad market index to the country where we are analyzing a stock. So for this stock, Thai Bank, we have to set the broad market index to ACT index. Ignoring the relative performance, if we look at the at a glance template, we can immediately see that there is a potential low risk, long opportunity in this bank. In fact, we had two successive very bullish shaped candles this week. That was Tuesday and Wednesday. Price was at the memory support line. The stock is fundamentally one of the strongest. So knowing that one Ella trader could put a buy order, limit order right at the memory support level using Q fine tune real time chart. If one did that, then one would get the stock at the lowest possible price, optimal price in a fundamentally strong stock. Even at close of Friday, we have a go with flow long trade setup. If somebody took it on Friday, stop loss could be set just below memory support level and profit could be booked at the declining memory resistance level, which is at the same level as the upper boundary lines. Some of our traders might have taken a long position in LH Bank using this 360 degrees analysis. From sector analysis, we now move to industry analysis. We are looking at industries best performing in last five days. Best performers are spread across multiple industries. They went up by between 4% to 7.3%. These are quite substantial gains for one week especially considering that the overall market is at all time high. Overall, these gains are larger than the percentage loss of the worst performers. This again confirms bullishness of the overall market. We see three automobile manufacturing related industries went up. Their strength is evident from QH industry analyst as well. Interestingly, auto parts related industries are not on this list. Auto parts industries went up for last 12 months. We can see that from QH industry analyst. However, in recent periods, they have weakened. Last week, if you remember, they were in the worst performance list. So though auto manufacturers are going up, it may be time to protect profit in auto component stocks by using trailing stock and may even look for some shorting opportunities. Let's have a look at QA to see the contrast between automobile manufacturers and auto parts and component industries. We can use Q drill for that. Last time I filtered the industries in Q drill based on utilities. Sometimes we don't remember exactly where the filter is applied. So one Simple change we have made, one enhancement is just click the investigate button again. It will clear all the filters and refresh the data. Now we can have a clean filter on auto industries. We can see that the auto components industry was strong for many months. 
but in recent periods it has declined in rank and the color has turned magenta that is also true for auto parts and equipment also true to some extent for auto truck and motorcycle parts whereas the manufacturers like auto and truck manufacturers it was somewhat weak earlier and has strengthened in recent months the same is true for automobiles and automobile manufacturers this shows the contrast between auto manufacturers and auto parts and components auto manufacturers were weak magenta earlier turning strong now whereas auto components were strong earlier and turning weak magenta now that is why i stated that if one is holding long position in auto parts and component stocks it may be wise to book some profit if not booked already and use trailing stock on remaining position in this way we can use q edge or q drill to have very microscopic view of exactly what is going on we don't just look at auto industries as one industry but look at different groups within that to see exactly which stocks are strong now and which stocks are weak now we are now looking at industries worst performing in last 5 days four of the worst performers are related to transportation a few months ago these stocks like rail liners trucking companies etc they were some of the strongest using q edge or q drill you could identify the exact turning point and protect profit or even take profitable shots kansas city southern ksu displayed a bearish headwind and false upside breakout and bear release on monday 2nd october this week and dropped by more than 4.5% giving a very profitable swing short trade so if you were keeping an eye on q edge then you could benefit from this profitable trend many stocks in these industries continue to be at pendulum high and are overvalued as you can see from q vital so one may be cautious and protect profit by using trailing stock may also book some profit let's have a look at some of these industries and also look at the stock ksu to see how we could have a very profitable short swing trade we are back to q drill we can just click the investigate button to refresh the data and filter on let's say railroads we can instantly see that how railroads was strong in earlier periods especially 9 10 11 12 month periods we can in the middle try to strengthen month 1 and month 2 periods and in last 10 days and 5 days it has weakened significantly we can also see from the rank change heat map that over two day to one day period it is one of the worst rank decliners so you could be careful about holding long position in railroads if they are going up no need to exit them prematurely may just use trailing stop if we look for trucking companies we can ignore the manufacturers and parts companies 
So what you can do? You can just clear the cells. Actually, we can clear the machinery stock also. If we just look at tracking, then we see similar pattern as we saw in case of railroads companies. It was strong earlier, we can in the middle try to strengthen and in recent periods, it has declined in strength considerably. The color has turned magenta. Now you can easily delete the unwanted cells, do your analysis, just focusing on the industry that you want to look at and simply click the investigate button again. It will refresh the data, clear all the filters. So you can start from scratch again. So we saw railroads and trucking companies, they weakened somewhat in recent period. The stocks, many of them are still at pendulum high. KSU was also at pendulum high. We can see that from the magenta color of the bear release and bearish headwind signal. It displayed a combination of bearish signals on this candle. It had a bearish headwind. It had a bear release signal. Price tried to go above watermark resistance level and came below that, creating a false upside breakout on this magenta candle. The flow candle color was magenta, that is traffic color was red. It was bearish. And in weekly also, price tried to go very close to the watermark resistance line. And in this week, it reversed from there. Looking at all these bearish signals, one could take a box short trade setup in KSU, while the industry was also weakening. On Friday, it hit the memory support line. It had extreme high activity. It already covered much more than the risk distance. Because the stock is right at memory support, one might exit the full position instead of holding partial position. If it goes up a little bit from here and tilts down, it may give us a valid low risk, go with flow, trend following, short trade opportunity. This is how we can sometimes take a short trade at the very top using reversal trade setups like headwind trade setup or box trade setup or bounce trade setup. In this case, it was a combination of bearish headwind and box short trade setup. And if we miss that, we can wait patiently for the subsequent go with flow trend following short trade setup to appear. Coming back to the worst performing industries, we see two of the worst performers are related to energy oil and gas drilling and oil related services and equipment. As oil declined, this industry's recent attempt at recovery faltered. Both of these industries are also among worst rank decliners. So they are not only in worst performer list, but also in the worst rank decliners list. However, there are not many obvious shorts in these industries as of Friday market close. The stocks are already at lower level and maybe at support. The technical charts doesn't show any clear short opportunity right now. Every week we also look at industries with biggest rank improvement. They tend to be best performers in subsequent weeks. Two restaurant related industries improved rank. These were lagging for many months. We'll see that in QH. 
DIN is optimally valued as seen from Q Vital. Also pays a very high dividend, 8.6% dividend. With the bank interests and fixed deposit interests being so low now, for retirement accounts or other appropriate accounts, one may consider buying strong stocks, either in terms of value, probably more in terms of value than in terms of growth. Stocks that are at low price, maybe at pendulum low on Q charts, pays a nice dividend and are not speculative, not penny stock companies. So DIN may be one such stock. One may buy both for swing trading, long-term investing, as well as as a dividend play. In fact, if you were keeping an eye on QH and the charts, DIN had a very profitable long trade setup on 22nd September. It displayed the bullish headwind a week prior to that, or a few weeks prior to that. We'll check it out. This way, we keep on seeing that bullish and bearish headwinds often foretell the subsequent reversal. We saw that in the railroads company, KSU, that reversed from the top after displaying bearish headwind. And we'll see DIN, it reversed from the bottom after displaying bullish headwind in the weekly chart. You may keep an eye on other stocks in this industry, restaurant industries, for possible long trade setups at Pendulum Low. Let's look at QH and also at the stock DIN using Q charts. We are using Q drill for USA stocks. You can filter on restaurants. And instantly, again, using the heat map, we see that it was weak for many months. However, in recent periods, five days, and then two day and one day period, the color turned cyan. It became strong. Looking at that, we could click the stocks components button or the hotkey control shift S. Go to the vital tab. It is now trying to retrieve stocks belonging to the restaurants industry. It has found 50 stocks. The stocks are listed on the left hand side because the fundamental data we have not retrieved yet. It is of stocks that belong to the older list. We have made the industry blank. That will tell us that we have not retrieved the fundamental data yet. We can click the calculator button as usual as we do in Q Vital to calculate the vital statistics. It has now calculated the data, vital statistics, and we can see the industry is populated now. All hotels and restaurants have come. We can click the investigate button and look at vital work area. If we are looking for value stocks, we can sort on relative value score from largest to smallest. And we can see which are the stocks that are strongest. If we are looking for stocks that has strong growth, then we may look for green sales under the EPS and revenue growth columns. So to refresh the data, you can just click the investigate button and we can see DPZ HT, HT. These few companies have strong growth. Let's look for DIN. DIN is not in this list. So we can always use QVITAR. Retrieve the pairs of 
Dine equity, do the calculation, and we can instantly see Dine dot n is one of the strongest in terms of valuation. Growth is poor, but as we keep mentioning that it is not common to have optimal valuation and good growth at same time. Sometimes we may be lucky, but it is not common. If we are trying to catch a stock at very bottom, it is more likely it will have optimal valuation than strong growth, as was the case in Dine Equity. And it pays a very nice dividend, 8.6%. Let's look at its chart. When we look at DIN using standard at a glance chart, we see that there was a bullish headwind in the weekly chart in the week when earnings came out. Earnings was positive and it was higher than previous quarter's earnings. We had another bullish headwind signal four weeks ago and since then price is gradually going up. In the daily chart, it created a higher high at this point and a higher low at this point. And the cyan candle color here gave us a go with flow long trade setup. This signal came when the industry was strengthening. We could keep an eye on QH to see that the stock itself is still very optimally valued, pays a nice dividend. So one could take a very low risk, long trade on this bar, putting stock just below recent low. Initial profit target would be the upper boundary that was hit in three trading days. As the industry is strengthening, the stock is fundamentally strong, pays a nice dividend. There was no reason to exit full position. So one may still be holding remaining position as of Friday's close. As I often prefer, after exiting partial position, the stop could be left at initial stop level until it creates a swing low. Now that has happened, so a trailing stop can be used to move stop just below the recent low. That way we can book profit and try to let profit run if the stock goes up. From the relative performance, we see that it is clearly outperforming the market in recent weeks. We see that gold and silver are among best rank improvers this week. Using QH, you could identify the exact turning point in gold, gold miners on 3rd October. And at that time, I noticed it, drilled down and shared a possible long trade in SBGL using Q360 degrees analysis. We will have a look at that. We'll try to use Q drill USA. Now among gold miners, there are still other stocks which may give long opportunities. RGLD has strong growth and AU has optimal valuation. Both can be identified using Q vital and they have interesting Q charts. Let's start from the industry, drill down and look at these three stocks, SBGL, RGLD and AU. In Q drill, we can click the investigate button to refresh the data, filter it on gold. And we can see that gold was very weak in the earlier period, strengthened, weakened, strengthened, weakened. And over last five days, two day and one day's period, it is cyan, so it's strengthened. 
Now we see that over one, two, and five days it is cyan. If we were keeping an eye on Q age regularly, then we could identify the exact day when over one day it was cyan and all the other cells nearby were magenta. I shared this exact turning point in traders community. And that was a potential long trade opportunity for SBGL. The goals precise turning point also gave us a potential long opportunity in SBGL. On 3rd October, I shared this post in traders community. Third October, snapshot as of midday, Eastern Standard Time. And you can see on that day, only the one day column was cyan. Everything else nearby was magenta. And it was a huge rank improvement from 229 to four, from two days to one day period. And from five days to one day, it was 246 to four. Very big rank jump which we could see instantly from the rank change heat map also. Cyan color on today one day rank change showed that it was one of the strongest, three out of 255 industries. So when I saw that, I wanted to look for potential gold mining stocks. So I drilled down and SBGL was one of them. SBGL. I did a fundamental analysis, peer analysis using QVital and instantly from the color coding, I could see that it has the best relative valuation, 97 in this list. Everything else was actually magenta. This was the only one which was blue. Pays a nice dividend as well, 6.33. It was very close to 52 week low only 8% above 52 week low. So we could still catch it at the bottom and short squeeze score was high, blue color, meaning there was potential for short squeeze. Let's look at the stock at that time. This is how the stock looked like using at a glance template. In daily chart, it had a very sharp drop. Then price came precisely to the watermark support level and reversed from there. In fact, it tried to go down and then went back up, creating a false downside breakout. As of that day, we had a bullish traffic light color candle. The bull release signal had come again. So this met all the conditions of box long trade setup except probably one that is the weekly candle color was not yellow yet. It was still magenta. So it doesn't fulfill all the conditions for box trade setup. However, looking at the bullish shape of the candle in weekly, it was hollow, no upper tail and that a bull release signal had also appeared, the up arrow, I thought it may be a good low risk long trade opportunity. In this way, once you understand the Q system, not only the technical charts, but also the fundamentals industry strength, you may sometimes take a low risk trade that doesn't meet all of the checklist conditions, but most, especially if you are watching the industry and stocks in that industry regularly, you will have a feeling of where you may be a little bit flexible on some of the checklist conditions. Let's look at SBGL using technical charts as of today. Remember this pays a nice dividend also. So our long signal came on this day, four days ago. 
moved sideways for two days and on Friday have a bullish close. The traffic light candle color is now cyan. Flow candle color is cyan. So it continues to be bullish. None of the days the candle color turned to yellow. Weekly is still not yellow yet, but the shape is bullish. So I could identify the exact turning point of gold miners. Drill down, found a fundamentally strong stock, SPGL, and take a very low risk, long opportunity, long trade in that stock. Let's look at RGLD and AU. For that, we go to Q drill, drill down on the stocks. For gold mining industry, it has found 68 stocks or still retrieving 66 stocks. Sometimes it may do multiple rounds. It tries to get some stocks and then tries to get some more stock. So we may wait for a few seconds till that data is completely retrieved. So it has found 66 stocks, industry is blank, meaning we have not calculated the fundamental statistics yet. We click the calculator button, it shows that vital statistics is being calculated. It is retrieving the data and then it will do the calculation. Once the calculation is complete, the industry column will be filled up. We can click on the investigate button to get the data in vital work area and look for optimally valued stocks. And we can immediately see SBGL is one of them. Has nice EPS growth also over recent years, one, two and three year periods. And I mentioned AU that also has very optimal valuation. In fact, only three in this list are optimally valued at present. So I mentioned AU and in terms of growth, RGLD is the strongest. Not optimally valued anymore, that is expected. So I identified AU and RGLD because they are also interesting on the technical charts. AU has a very nice looking chart. It went to the upper boundary, decline, then making a bowl or saucer pan like formation, gradually tilting upward. Gave a sand color candle few days ago. On Friday, tried to go down, precisely hit the memory support and reverse from there. The weekly candle color is already cyan here. In fact, if somebody was watching at gold miners industry and looked at the memory support in the daily chart, on Friday, one could use fine tune real time chart to take a very low risk long entry. So let's first start with the daily chart. I change the template to clean chart template. On the daily chart, I want to draw a line at the memory support level, drawing horizontal line. This is exactly where the memory support line was there as of Friday. So I could be ready to take a long trade and then switch to fine tune real time chart. We can see that after market open, which was a small gap down open, price opened at this blue level on Friday below thrust is low, that was the rate level. Early range high and early range low were formed. 
in this case we were only going to take long trend if price came to the daily memory support line which is this white dotted line we just drew so price tried to go below that and on this green candle we had a false downside breakout it was accompanied with very high activity the candle traffic light color turned green it had a bull release signal so this was happening in a stock that was optimally valued stock in an industry that was strengthening and we had the minuscule risk possible in taking a long trade this was not only a day trade but could be taken as a swing trade or even a possible long term investment so the fact that our stop loss was in terms of 5 minute interval only two bars of that our entry price would be at the close of this green candle stop will be just below the yellow candle this candle just below the yellow candle as price sharply went up somebody could book partial profit the stock is strong the industry is getting stronger so there would not be any reason to exit full position at least partial position could be held this is yet another example where we could use the memory support resistance in daily chart to precisely enter a swing trade using fine tune real time chart so ae was optimally valued rgld has one of the best growth among gold miners if a stock has best growth we expect that it has already gone up which is true for rgld we see for last couple of weeks it has come down this week it has a bullish shaped candle the backdrop candle color is still bearish so there is no standard q long trade setup however i know that several traders keep an eye on a strong stock in this case a strong growth stock to come down to a major support line like the yellow direction line and go up from there on friday it has a very bullish shape and bullish color candle in delhi so some of those traders not using q standard trade setup but could take a trade based on the support on the yellow direction line at friday's close would stop just below friday candle slow and maybe take the declining memory resistance line as initial profit target level so two stocks in same industry but very different charts and very different fundamentals using the q systems you could identify both kinds of trades one is high growth already went up then tilted down gave us a low risk entry opportunity rgld and other one we saw aeu which didn't go up so it is optimally valued and is also giving us a low risk entry opportunity now that is one thing that is constant in all our trades all our trades are low risk trades in trading i can confidently say that if somebody has a reliable system all he or she needs to do is to manage the risk part profit will come as is also reinforced by the trades i continue to share in our traders community i was pretty happy to find the sb what was that sbgl instantly i could look at the fundamental strength and similarly i could look at potential trades in rgld and aeu if we look at industries with biggest rank declines then we see that three construction and apparel related industries declined in rank heavily from key wage 
you may clearly see that they are flip-flopping. The colors are shifting between cyan and magenta. So is true for two apparel and specialty store industries. All these five industries are magenta over five days, but cyan over 10 days. When that happens, it may give us a low risk entry opportunity in an industry that tried to go up, tilted down a little bit. That is what we are waiting for, a possible swing low in a stock that is starting to go up or an industry that is starting to go. LB gave a go with flow long trade setup on 22nd September. Several others, CATO, GCO and FL, FL is Foot Locker, are also fundamentally strong. We can instantly identify them from Q drill. Course is in fact the strongest fundamentally and it has already gone up. You may look for potential long in some of these stocks. In terms of appliances industry, Whirlpool, LBY and TUP, Tupperware are optimally valued. So you may keep an eye on them as well. Let's have a look at apparel retailers and drill down to some of their fundamentals and charts. In Q Drill USA, we can refresh the data by clicking the investigate button, the magnifying glass, search for apparel, apparel and accessories retailer. Instantly we can see it was very magenta, very weak for many months and in recent periods, it is improving. Over five days it declined, but it strengthened again over two days and one day period. Same is true for several other retailers. So we could drill down by clicking the get stocks button, go to Q Vital, apparel and accessories retailers is trying to retrieve the data. Found 50 stocks. We have to click the calculate button to do the vital statistics calculation. It has updated the data. We can click the investigate button again to get the data into vital work area. We can sort it by valuation. Course immediately catches the eye. Course has the best possible valuation score and growth is also quite strong. Course has already gone up that we expect in any stock that has higher growth. Course, we can see nicely went up. It tried to go below the watermark support level in weekly, completed a false downside breakout on this candle. Then earnings was nearby, so we were not going to take any long trade and hold on to the trade through the earnings way, the earnings had a very big gap up. So we are not going to chase the trade. We let it come down, create a base, give us a cyan color candle. The cyan color candle was already close to upper boundary. So a standard Q trader might not take the long trade. However, if somebody was keeping an eye on the stock, its fundamental strength and its industry strength and the big jump at earnings, tilting down, going up again, then one could be somewhat flexible and take a long trade on the sand candle. Put stop just below the recent low and maybe book partial profit once the risk distance is covered. So if entry price is here, stop loss is at this level, Maybe by the time price came to 48, 45, this price point already, the risk distance was covered and partial profit could be booked. The stock continues to be strong, both in terms of valuation and growth. Industry is strengthening, so it 
would not be necessary to exit full position, partial position could still be held. As it has already created higher lows and another possible higher low here, one could start using trailing stop. Move the stop from initial stop loss to trailing stop here and now maybe just below Friday candle. If we look for LB, we can see it here. LBL brands is also very strong fundamentally. Optimal valuation has short squeeze potential, has reasonable good growth also. Pays a nice dividend, 5.59%. LB came down after earnings, stabilized, went up, created a higher high came back to this level, created a higher low, gave a cyan color candle. So again, one could take a go with flow long trade on this candle. If somebody was using real time charts, then one could take a long using early range somewhere in the middle of this candle. Book partial profit once the risk distance was covered, the stock and industry both are continuing to be strong, so one may hold the partial position. There are several other stocks in this industry. I mentioned it in the graph. You may keep an eye on them. Those are CATO, GCO, Putlocker, and in appliances industry, Whirlpool, LBY, and Tupperware. So this is a case where the industry had rank decline, but when we see more closely using Q edge or Q drill, we see that though over five days it declined, over 10 days it is still remaining cyan. Over 10 days it is still remaining cyan, apparel accessories, apparel accessory retailers, though five days it is magenta. And over two days and one day it regains strength. Those are the times we may look for swing lows. So though this industry's rank declined heavily over five day period, we can see that from rank change column, 10 day to five day, but still we could find long trade opportunity. Fundamentally strong, optimally valued, good growth, sometimes nice dividend. That is different in case of semiconductors. We have two semiconductor industries in the biggest rank decliners, semiconductor equipment and semiconductor equipment and testing. These industries are at or near all time high. And if you were watching the weekly market roundups regularly, you see that one week they are strong, one week they are weak. However, overall they are at very high level, pendulum high, most of them. There are not many obvious shorts or not even obvious weak stocks but I found one MRVL using Q drill. Very easy to find and this looked like one of the weakest. So we can keep an eye on this and could try to short it, especially if the industry weakens. That's what we always try to do. We take short only in industry that is either weak or weakening. Then in a stock that is fundamentally weak and chart is also giving us an optimal entry point. MRVL seems to be the best possible candidate from that perspective. Let's use Q drill to start from industry and then drill down to Marvel. In Q drill, again, click the magnifying glass to refresh the data, filter for the semiconductor industries. And we can see it is continuing to be pretty strong. However, over five days, there is some warning signal for semiconductor equipment and equipment and testing. They declined in rank heavily. That is what showed up in the graph. And now we can instantly see that from the rank change column also. Over five days, it is faring very poorly. Actually, this one, semiconductor equipment in terms of rank change to 54. 
one just just slightly higher than the worst possible value of 255. So in semiconductor equipment, we could get the stocks, go to Q vital, it goes to the universe that is Metastock Zenith, Thomson Reuters icon to get the data, 50 stocks found, industry is still blank. So we can click the calculator. Does a lot of calculation, this Q drill. Not only the data that you can see on this vital page, but if we click investigate and go to vital work area, we have everything that was there in Q vital. So we can see the stocks, whether earnings is nearby, average volume, five day over 30 day volume change, market cap, closing price. Go further right, we see the performance data, one year to one month, and then more frequently for recent periods, 10 day, five day, two day, one day, also see how close it is to 52 week highs and lows. We can get the detailed fundamental information, the valuation columns, EBB, P, PBR, dividend yield, short interest, high or not, some management performance related data, operating margin, ROE, ROA, and the debt profile, quick ratio, current ratio, debt to BT, also alpha beta, the company is making profit or not. Finally, if we go further to the right, we see the detailed growth information. So we have all the data. However, just as in case of QVital, mostly I use the vital statistics. That is the first panel. And we are now looking for stocks that are relatively weak in this list. And Marvel immediately catches the eye. It is weak in terms of valuation. Relative valuation is magenta. Earnings score is actually the weakest possible score of one. Growth is very poor relative to the stocks in this list. So Marvel caught my eye and I looked at the chart. In fact, it had a bearish headwind trade set up a few weeks ago. Then price came to value area, that trade was exited with profit. It was discussed in one of the earlier weekly market roundups. Then price tried to go up to the high that was created by the bearish headway. Reverse from there. On Thursday, it displayed a bear release signal. On Friday, it had a gap down day. Bearish shape candle. Movement has turned red. In weekly, we have a bearish shape candle. There is no standard Q trade setup and I will not in this case try to take a shot on Friday. It has declined somewhat. There is also a memory support line. However, this is the stock that is fundamentally weakest in the semiconductors industry. As we saw from Q drill, we could see that from Q vital also the stock is not going up strongly, not like the other semiconductor stocks. The industry is still strong. If it starts to weaken, then Marvel may be the best short candidate. And by doing this analysis, we may create a short list of potential short trades for semiconductors. And when the signal comes, maybe Q standard trade setup, we'll be confident to take the trade. Using Q Edge, industry analyst or Q drill, you can find many other interesting trade setups or trade ideas. If we sort it over five days, descending order, five days is the primary period that we use for trade entry, low risk trade entry. If Magenta, we are trying to take only short trades. If Cyan, ascending, order, then these are the strongest industries. We are trying to take only long trades. Airlines immediately catches the eye. It was weak earlier, turning strong now. 
over five days very high rank that is low value three rank so one could drill down retrieving the stocks in airlines 19 stocks found industry is blank so i click the calculator button shows it is retrieving the data calculating the vital statistics the data has come immediately we can see ual is optimally valued in terms of growth you may say ha if you look at earnings growth and also jet blue so now you can look at q technical charts to see if there is potential long trade opportunity you can spend time and easily do this drill down now using q drill it is not released yet but you can continue to use q edge and q vital many of you have this product and do a similar analysis that is all that i plan to share in today's session thanks a lot for joining i look forward to seeing you in our next session have a great weekend and trade profitably